All right, mic check, mic check. Just getting situated. Thank you all for joining me tonight. Make sure everything looks good. All right, just like that, we're live. Thanks for being here. Appreciate all you tuning in tonight. Uh, those of you watching it back as well, appreciate that just as much. But basically, the main topic of today is going to be CandyCon, uh, the latest and what's going on with GameStop, powered by GameStop. Create, play, repeat. Previously, where this started out, you know, we saw this trademark come into play, uh, the CandyCon trademark, and it was like, what is CandyCon? What is it going to be? What's going on with it? What does the trademark mean? What's this? What's that? Right. And now we're starting to finally see it. And this website's pretty dope. Um, I don't know if you guys have seen it yet. CandyConLab.com. So you can't actually purchase anything through it. I mean, I just took a brief look at it today. It's like the first time I actually found it. Uh, this particular website that is. So I'm not sure exactly when this went when this went live, but definitely will be going through this a little bit. Uh, I kind of just selected some miscellaneous stuff just for the sake of the example, but. You'll see here in a minute when I do go through it, that is a customizable like controller, but it's not like you're actually purchasing it on this, excuse me, on this website. You're gonna be purchasing it on the GameStop website. And also I broke it down in here, uh, just kind of going through each one. So we'll really just break that down in a few minutes, but let's get the chat going on the side here. Make sure to say hello to everyone real quick as we get rocking and rolling. And also a little later on, I'm gonna to touch a little bit more on the Bitcoin having, you know, I know last time I was saying, Bitcoin was deflationary. I would like to correct that to say Bitcoin is disinflationary. I think that's a better way to put it. And I'll get into that a little bit more later on. I'm also doing some research on the Ethereum supply. Uh, it's pretty interesting, a little bit complex, but still wrapping my head around it as time goes on here. But let's get the stream tweeted out, get the chat going on the side. Make sure everything looks good. Scott, thanks for being here. Appreciate you very much. Uh, mall traffic down big time. I expect more GME store closures. Scott, yeah, unfortunately, that seems to be the trend right now. Just continuous decline, like slow, steady decline in mall traffic and just foot traffic in general. And I think definitely with inflation and just tougher economic situations for the average individual, just a lot less like discretionary spending going on. So it could be a factor that leads to more stores closing for GameStop. But we will see as time goes on. Okay, stream is tweeted out. Hi, Tetron. Sharon, thanks for being here. Appreciate you popping in. Ray, puts, uh, looks like a planet or something, but thanks for being here. Hope you're doing well. Meagle, good to see you as well. Wendy, everyone's in the house. Love to see it. Just getting started here. But yeah, I mean, definitely let me know what you guys think of CandyCon. Uh, I think I'm in the phase right now. Where I'm pretty excited about it, and I'm trying to temper my expectations okay like let's see how this goes focus on this and go from there in terms of what candy con shakes out to be so looking at candy con here you can see gamestop shakes up the gaming scene with candy con personalized controllers if we scroll on down candy con adds to the fun of gaming by allowing players to mix and match the parts of their gaming controllers and customize them in irresistible hues the controllers have switchable accessories which bring the fun of a pick and mix candy store to the gaming controller. Gamers pick up a base unit and choose the color and style of the faceplates, thumbsticks, and directional pads, and simply click them longer, or together. <laughs> Global branding agency sets it up uh, with the tagline, create, play, repeat. Um, I do like that, you know, I think marketing, I was saying a little bit of last stream, marketing is gonna be a big part of this. You know, how they go about marketing it is definitely gonna be essential. You know, you see this little billboard here, the available exclusively at GameStop, and that is the huge factor. And what this article goes on to say is, I'm forgetting where the exact location is. So the groundbreaking controller will be, yes, this is it. The groundbreaking controller will initially be for Nintendo Switch and PC gaming. The launch of CandyCon shows GameStop's commitment to enhance, enhancing the gaming experience and to offer gamers an affordable way to express themselves with the controller style to their taste. The launch also demonstrates GameStop's forward thinking in spotting a gap in the market and offering a new, distinctive brand to strengthen their position as the world's largest games retailer while pioneering innovation so essentially in short this is a step in direction of private labeling and we'll have to see if they do more of this if CandyCon itself is expanded upon more or they do some different like private labels i guess you could call it but going through just what the controllers here so 
we know GameStop launches CandyCon. And now we see all these products pop up on their website. So I'm going to break it down for you here. I kind of put together this little infographic. So CandyCon wireless base controller costs you $34.99. And that's a straight base controller. You see there's nothing actually on it in terms of what's covering the joysticks and the pad here and every, like everything else. Like it's just a base model. Whereas if you move on here, you see they have some preset ones uh candycon player ready pack controller solar orbit so this is like a pre-made one for 49.99 whereas the base is 34.99 and the base unit doesn't have like any of the actual attachments on it and it's what it's called a base but these three are like some pre-made ones you have solar orbit lavender haze and liquid metal and they're 49.99 each but they're not really customizable because they're already pre-designed but then when you move on here uh, you can also buy something called the combo pack. So the combo pack is essentially all the parts for the controller that you could put on a base model, but it's $14.99 and it's just all one color. So if you wanted an all blue remote or an all white or all black in terms of the accessories and customizability, you would just buy one of these for $14.99 and then slap it on here and it essentially costs the same as $49.99 for the pre-made ones. But moving on, if you want to customize it, you know, to your own liking in your own individual way, you can buy basically four different aspects of it. So one, you have the CandyCon faceplate. Uh, there's 10 different ones they have right now. You see they have two designs. You have Retro Shapes and Electro City. And then there's eight base colors. They're generally vibrant colors, so they're going to pop out at you uh, when you're just looking at it. So these are $9.99 each. And then beyond that, we got the CandyCon thumbsticks. So those are only $3.99. It's just for each, you know, little joystick basically on the controller. And these are only $3.99. And there's actually 12 of these. Only 10 are pictured because otherwise it would have been too small for like the way this infographic was shaken out. But there is actually 12 total. And it's the same for the D-pad. There's only 12. Uh, not only 12, but there's only 10 shown. But there's 12 total. And these are also $3.99 each. So really it's pieces of a controller to be customized and let's say you get the blue d-pad you get bored of that you buy the yellow one next time you're at gamestop you can then go ahead and switch that out and just make it however you'd like and then if you have multiple controllers you could switch it out in a multitude of ways and maybe that's a scenario where you buy the arctic white uh, combo pack but you only use the faceplate and the d-pad to be actually part of another part an, another version of the remote where you bought the thumbsticks and and the oh my god i'm mixing myself up but the point is like is you can change it in and out so even if you bought the combo pack you don't have to necessarily use the entire combo on one controller you can use some of it on one controller some of it on the second controller keep an extra piece for in the future if you ever want to switch it out in some way and then all together right like to kind of summarize it the breakdown is the base unit is $34.99. The three pre-customized controllers are $49.99 a piece, whereas the three combo controller kit is $14.99, which is the faceplate, thumbstick, and the D-pad of all one color sold as one. And right now they have that only available in black, white, and blue. And the faceplates are $9.99 each, uh, two designs and eight vibrant colors, 12 thumbsticks, uh, 12 D-pads, and just total amount available those are 399 each so if you theoretically wanted to just build a controller from scratch and buy like each thing individually the base unit plus the faceplate plus the thumbstick plus the d-pad would cost you 5296 whereas a pre-customized remote which we looked at over here is 4999 so essentially you can customize it for just three dollars more you would only save three dollars by just making buying one of these pre-made ones. Whereas if you want to customize it in your own individual way, like one that stood out to me, I really like the Midnight Purple. I think that looks super dope and that's gonna be the one I wind up getting when I do get one uh, for the faceplate of my customized controller. But you can customize it and I can get the black thumbstick so then maybe I want some Orange Crush D-pad and I can mix, mix and match that for 5296. And I wanted to also just share some initial thoughts. You know, as I was putting this together, I'm like, well, where could they go with this? What could this look like? And I just threw down some thoughts. So potential for collaboration. Could they do something where another brand 
is involved or maybe even not another brand an individual where it's a faceplate that it's like candy con times whoever right like if it was candy con times mcdonald's right just a really bizarre example and then the faceplate had like french fries and a big mac on it as the design that could be like a collaboration right so maybe they can do something to that effect obviously i don't think mcdonald's is the right choice it's a pretty absurd example but just to give you some perspective there so that's one of the things i look for and then being that the article implied starting out with switch and pc my next question is will playstation X xbox controllers be next if so i think that would be huge definitely another step in the right direction and just them going brick by brick and you know of course I welcome the Bulls, I welcome the Bears, and you already know what the Bears are saying. Oh, GameStop, you think they're going to raise their revenue from just doing controllers? Oh my god, you're such an idiot, blah, 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 right? And that's just the way it goes sometimes. And I welcome the Bulls, I welcome the Bears, I know you're all here watching, so I do appreciate that. But moving on to the next point, as I was just going through this, I was just kind of throwing down any ideas that popped in my head. And I've already said this a couple times, but marketing is essential, you know. Given the design and just its overall like look, like you just a lot of vibrant colors, and I really like this over here. Like this just looks dope. Like and they need to put this kind of stuff on social media and really just build it out and get the name out there, get people understanding what it is, and maybe that's another opportunity for collaboration. Or when I say collaboration in this sense, I mean more so a streamer were to showcase it or use it on a stream like hey like i built this it's called candy con it's exclusively at gamestop i just got it i really love their remote i'm gonna be using it to play xyz game today right maybe they could do stuff like that in terms of marketing and then also that would come with maybe that streamer says oh you know playing today and then that it, like just like when i put out like oh i'm gonna stream and then i put usually the image of the thumbnail on twitter as like the image with the tweet saying hey i'm gonna stream maybe they would put something for candy con right just to get the name out there and then beyond that you know i would really like to see them like if they are going to market this how i'm imagining them to i would like to see them do a lot of like shorts like youtube shorts instagram reels tiktok types i mean it's all the same format right where it's just swipe 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 that's the world we live in so you have to appeal to that and that's i think the best way to market people and reach new customers and get people who yeah, haven't in a long time or haven't previously shopped at GameStop to shop at GameStop. But I got like one more, one or two more points here. So are we going to see more of this from GameStop? Will they look to sell more quote unquote private label items in the future? Will it be more candy con based items where they expand upon this? Maybe it's, I don't know, something for actual consoles, like a skin for a console type of thing. I don't know if they'd exactly do that, but do they expand in that route in any shape or sort form or do they go with more private label type items with different names right where maybe it's i don't know like literally anything else but then also it's not the name candy con but they're using a, a different name to appeal to that particular thing right whereas these this is candy con and it's con controller candy you know candies generally brighter colors so that's what i'm gathering out of the branding here but Branding and marketing is definitely a huge part of this. So in one of the articles I was reading, and I think I might have it pulled up in here, and we'll get to this in a second. Where, yeah, let's see. New ways to be profitable. Yeah, okay, continue reading. Frankly, I think if you're in the business of delighting your customers, you can be very successful. And we have... And we would have been successful, frankly, in any category. This is what Ryan Cohen said on CNBC when Chewy went public. So it really just shows his commitment to the customer being first and just a good customer experience being a part of what he believes in, how he executed upon a Chewy. And I know Chewy's different. And you can see source Chewy founder Ryan Cohen on the company Strong IPO. But it's the same concept. Like if you read this quote in itself, frankly, I think if you... If you're in the business of delighting your customers, you could be very successful. And we would have been very... Can't read today, guys. Cannot read sometimes. But frankly, I think if you're in the business of delighting your customers, you could be very successful. And we would have been successful, frankly, in any category. I think it was the font that was throwing me off there. But 
being that he is in GameStop now, he do he does have the opportunity to execute upon that and show that that statement is correct. And of course, you know, the execution has to actually take place. It gets nice saying, oh yeah, like they have to execute, but they have to actually put in the work, take time. And it seems like they have, and that's where they came up with this. And it is going to take more time, but you know, I'm personally okay with that. And where I was going with this is, let's see, go to, they had a good point in one of these articles and now I totally lost my train of thought. Let's see if I can get it back. Created by GameStop should be a favorable margin. That's the last point there, but it's one of these, oh, I remember what it was. One of these articles, there's like a couple leaking out. You know, they're not widely seen. Like if you just type in CandyCon on Google, of course it doesn't come up, right? You know, I'll leave you to speculate on that. But at the same time, it is relatively newer. So the search results are the most optimal. Whereas you do want to optimize it from GameStop's perspective, where if somebody types in CandyCon, it'll easy, easily come up. The GameStop website will come up, but like these articles won't. So I guess that's not GameStop. But so I digress from that. What one of the articles was saying is that, oh my God. Hey, literally, every time I'm going to say it, it keeps slipping out of my mind. But should be a favorable margin. Oh, so annoying when this happens. But. Basically that it's the customizability and where they take it is what matters, right? That's really what it comes down to. And I'm going to try, I know as soon as I start talking about the next thing, it's going to pop in my mind, whatever I was trying to say, but going over here, I just found this website earlier today, CandyCon lab slash build your own controller powered by GameStop. So one, if you go here, let's keep randomizing it, which I think is pretty dope. This is pretty pretty sick this uh faceplate or yeah that's what they call it right faceplate but we can make one right now so you can just do random just get some different ideas but let's say we take it from the top we go with as i mentioned before the midnight purple i think it just looks sick the left thumbstick let's go with yellow or let's say lemon a little bit brighter and then i'm going to go with the right thumbstick then a teal I think I'm gonna go. I'm gonna go Arctic white, and then for the D-pad, I kind of like this ocean blue, or mm, probably red would look better. That's actually kind of ugly in its final result, but I'll have to play around with it a bit to see what I really like at the end of the day. So, oh yeah, the black looks pretty good there, but maybe with a change, the right thumbstick, orange. That looks pretty cool. I like that one. That's a little bit nicer, but. Generally, when you're putting colors together, you should do like complementary colors. But obviously with this, you know, it's customizable. It's whatever you like. That looks a little bit nicer. Yeah, probably ocean blue doesn't go well with the purple. Probably more like the cyan or arctic white would look good. But I definitely like the orange with the purple. Or even if you went both orange, right? Because like if you think about it, if you bought it on GameStop, like the structure I'm showing you here, you would buy like both thumbsticks together. It comes two in one. Obviously, you could buy two packs if you preferred but i would think most people are probably going to do the same color of thumbsticks at least starting out or if you're doing multiple remotes you know maybe not the case but yeah let's go hit the chat see how everyone's doing and i do appreciate all you guys being here um is this solution to increase gme revenue why was kenya not released before christmas holiday jackson's thanks for being here uh that's definitely a valid question and i think it's part of the way they increase their revenue again and they keep doing more things similar to CandyCon and banding, building upon CandyCon itself. But as to why it wasn't before the Christmas holiday, I truly couldn't tell you, but I would think if it was ready at that point, it would have been put out there. So I'm thinking it was still in development. And I, like I said, there's a couple articles where it's, let's see the other one. They're just saying some miscellaneous stuff about like how they got to creating it. So this one's pretty short, has all the different images. But most gamers use expensive first party game controllers. Well, the launch also demonstrates forward thinking, spotting a gap in the market. I thought I saw one more saying how they were taking a long time to design it and how it was like, I think it was like a LinkedIn post. I saw someone like posted a screenshot of where essentially it took a long time to put it together and the trademark was only filed, I think it was November of 2023. So it seems like an idea that was relatively new at the time of the holidays. Unfortunately, like it would have been a lot better if they, I agree, if they came up with this in 
September or August and just expedited it and made sure it was ready to go for a holiday season. That definitely could have boosted Q4. But, you know, at this point, it is what it is. And I definitely would like to see them market it very strongly, especially around the holiday season next year. How is it a gap when you can customize controllers on Microsoft? Nothing. Thanks for being here. Um, so as of now, you know, it is only Nintendo Switch. So I guess that could be like a counter argument as to why they might not do it with Xbox one day. But I see it as, you know, it's not a first party controller. They can undercut it in terms of the price as long as the functionality is strong. If the functionality isn't strong, then that's obviously a reason for concern, I would say. Hi, Tetron. Hi, chat. Hope everyone is doing, having a good week's form. Platinum, good to see you. Thanks for being here. Appreciate you popping in. Uh, quality of these controller will be interesting. Exactly nothing. Exactly. You're exactly right. Although your name is nothing, but you are right. <laughs> uh, what's the margin on these CandyCon products? Any guesses, Tetron? Goodfellas89, thanks for being here. Uh, it's hard to say, right? Like It really is hard to say. And I don't have, unfortunately, like any kind of expertise in the average margin of an item like this or... I guess the best way to go about it would be to look like how much does the average company make on their controller. But I would like to guess that their net margin is like maybe 25%. You know, I'm just throwing out a random number there. And I don't think we'll ever know. That's the truth. Like, I don't think there's anything going to be like any publication about that. But probably the best way to think about it or to look into it would be to See if there is any research or information out there in regards to how much like it costs to build the average controller, whereas like the average price it's sold for. But I would like to think that the margin is 25% to 30% at minimum. Although, you know, when you look at something like the thumbsticks, they're sold for a relatively low price, $4. But at the same time, when you're mass producing these and it's really about the marketing, I would think they should easily be able to make these for less than a dollar a piece. So if that was the case, right? Like let's say it's 50 cents a piece or let's use simple numbers, a dollar a piece, then they have like pretty much a 400% margin theoretically, right? Like they're selling it four times as much as they're paying to create it. Whereas here, if they're paying it, if they're paying like $5 to make it, then their profit margin would be a hundred. So as I'm saying this in real time, I'm thinking it's probably higher, but that's also, you know, price to create, price sold of the product minus cost of goods to actually create the physical controller. But then, you know, also there's overhead costs, but that's where you then calculate everything as a whole. So it gets a little more complicated than that. But overall, I definitely see this improving their margins in the long term. If they continue to focus on things similar to CandyCon or more, of building on top of CandyCon. So we'll have to see what comes with that. Uh, I will definitely be purchasing. Yeah, Wendy, me too. Definitely me too. They look pretty sweet. Uh, I hope they make a smaller size too. Yeah, me too, Platinum. I was thinking like, isn't isn't it where you can buy like the Switch controllers too? Like maybe like, like a Switch controller in the sense like where it's like the ones you think of, like the tiny ones, maybe like that, they would have some of those, but we'll have to see as time goes on. Hello, Manuel. Thanks for popping in. CandyCon, at least uh, production costs will be pennies for CandyCon. Yeah, Gustavo, I, I think as I'm speaking it out loud and thinking about it more, what I was saying before about 25% margin just doesn't quite make sense. So, you know, this is a perfect example where I got to just sometimes think things out out loud and just talk to you guys in the chat and bounce ideas off each other. So I would imagine, you know, especially being how basic these are, this should not cost more than a dollar to create. And especially if... GameStop is creating it in-house, you know, generally speaking, any in-house branded products have a higher margin because you don't have to buy it off of the supplier. And that's why a lot of times, like if you were to buy something from your grocery store and you're going to buy like the branded version versus the off-brand, the off-brand is always cheaper because it's pretty much nearly the same thing. I mean, obviously it depends on the actual product, but they make they're able to undercut the known brand name with an unbranded product because they're essentially creating it in-house i mean it's a little bit different with the grocery store but just in general when you see like best buy branded product or a walmart branded product or a target in-house brand that you, like isn't available anywhere else it's that same kind of thing where they're able to undercut the other brands that are being sold because creating that product is cheaper than buying it wholesale off of a widely known brand because that brand 
has to also make a margin on its wholesale selling it to GameStop or whoever the retailer is in whatever particular situation. How do you feel about Param and GameStop? Uh, when, Wendy, honestly, I haven't looked into Param too much. Like I see it popping up and I'm just not too sure about it. So I got to look into it, honestly, before I get back to you on that. But I've seen it like in my feed, but I haven't really officially like looked at it at any point yet. Uh, too many, too bad. Too many people hate third-party controllers. Usually, never holds any value on the secondary market. Gustavo, that's a very valid point. I'm not gonna lie. You know, that is definitely something that's crossed my mind. Where I'm like, typically, when you buy a non-first-party controller, you expect issues and you expect problems, and that's kind of why I was saying before, like, it really has to be a well-oiled machine, or not oiled machine because it's a controller, right? But it has to be a, a good product. Like if if the controller is crap, then that's going to derail everything, right? So it starts with it being like an actual good product. And then once you have an actual good product, I think people will like the customizability option. And we'll have to see. We'll have to see. That's like, that's always my go-to phrase. We'll have to see. But it's so true, right? Because I'm not ever going to sit here and say like, oh, this is a guarantee. Like, the game has changed, you know, oh, this is this is what we've been waiting for. No, I just take it as it comes, view it as it is, call it how I see it. And just because how I'm calling something, does it, and I'm seeing it a certain type of way, doesn't mean that's right. It's just my opinion, my perspective, and individual thoughts, right? That's how it goes. But controls are high quality and look great. ADG. ADG Core, thanks for being here. And yeah, no, I totally agree. I haven't used one yet, so I can't attest to the fact that it functions well, personally at least. But I've seen, you know, comments online and it seems like people are not having any kind of issues, not that I've seen at least. But definitely the look is very cool. And especially as we have CandyCon Lab here and you can see like before you actually buy it. Oh, very interesting. You can kind of, but how would you change this? Like if you were to buy it, right? Like, I guess just to see the before and after. And then if you switch them. Oh, because you have left and right thumbstick. And then. Oh, okay. Just kind of swapping back and forth. But. Yeah, I'm definitely curious. Like if they build upon this in a way where they're going to brand it. In the sense. Like not brand it. Sorry. Collaborate with other people. So. When they collaborate with, with another person or another brand, maybe they can put that on here. And then obviously that'll probably cost a little bit more. Whereas like the base colors would be a little bit less because it'd be just made in house. And I'm sure GameStop would then have to pay a royalty if there was like a co another collaborative brand or individual involved. Right. And I think something I've kind of like long pondered them doing is really being more involved with streamers, not saying myself individually. I mean like large g gaming streamers, like, if they were to partner with someone like random, right? Like I always think of Dr. Disrespect. Like I just think he's a unique guy. And I'm not saying that he's necessarily the best option, but I'm just saying they should partner, I think. And obviously I don't know the logistics of it, but just I pondered the idea of them being like sponsoring a stream for a popular streamer. And in that particular stream, you know, they just mentioned GameStop briefly, but if people have a positive image of a particular streamer, and then they endorse GameStop or CandyCon. That's how you bring more people to it. And obviously the logistics are very complicated with that. How much is the sponsor going to cost? You know, how much is it actually going to pay out? Like there's a lot, like it sounds a lot easier said than done is what I'm trying to say. But I would like to see them start to do some stuff like that. Like I think there's definitely opportunity there. And it can definitely revive the brand a little bit. Well, I think the brand is strong. I think there's a lot of people who previously shopped GameStop maybe five, ten years ago. They haven't bought anything since. They think, oh, it's so terrible now. And maybe if they get one good product or one good experience because they see a streamer, they're like using GameStop products or talking about GameStop. That starts to bring back some customers that have maybe moved away or people who are shopping within the gaming industry and buying you know, technology-based items and whether it's a gaming controller, a gaming console, games, people actually look to GameStop again when now maybe they've kind of dismissed it in their mind, given that somebody that they follow and are interested in what they say starts to use it, right? So just kind of a general idea there. 
but exactly love the small switch controller yeah platinum i think you know if they're gonna make these compatible for switch anyway you might as well do the small ones as well because why not still holding man just zen baby jay thanks for popping in yeah me too man me too you know the stock's gonna do what it's gonna do and for me i'm just gonna focus on what the company's doing that's why i wanted to go through candy con here as i am just wrapping my head around everything you know i put together this little uh infographic last night you know just boom 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 just kind of going through you have the summary of what it is you get the base controller we've got a couple pre-made ones that they have and then we also have the combo packs which is just a all one color set that you could throw on the base controller theoretically if you wanted or if you don't feel like customizing or if you just like these designs you could go with one of these solar orbit lavender haze liquid metal and then you have the face plates the thumbsticks and the uh, d-pad so it would be interesting i mean this website i just found it right it would be interesting oh i guess you could start from scratch that's pretty cool you just keep randomizing but it would be interesting to see if maybe there's an option where you can customize it on here let's say click a bunch of time boom this is the design i want right if you could order a remote pre-made like this like if it was pre like you could set it like to remember to breathe sometimes guys let me tell you switch streaming sometimes you just go 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 and like you're just saying your next thoughts and you just keep going and sometimes you remember like slow down breathe like think about what i'm trying to say make sure it comes across in an accurate way but that's why we just keep working and get better out here so what i'm trying to say here is i wonder if it'll get to a point where you could build your own controller and say okay this is the exact controller i want and instead of buying the base unit, buying the faceplate, buying two different thumbsticks because you want a different color on each and the D-pad, could it be a situation where you can customize it online and then just buy it in this format for a fat, fat a flat fee of $49.99? Uh, but the only thing with that, and I don't know if everyone would necessarily want to do that, is then you can't customize it again later because it's already pre-made. And that's kind of the issue i guess you could say with these ones i wouldn't really call it an issue because you understand what you're buying but maybe that's something they'll throw in there as another option for individuals um, but i feel like a lot of people will like the idea of the base controller and then buying the various pieces throughout because maybe you get bored of a certain faceplate and then you just buy a new one or because a new design launches and then you switch out the old one but then maybe you get a second controller and you use the old faceplate for the second controller but now you need a couple more thumbsticks a couple more d-pads and then when you get the new thumbsticks you could mix and match the colors on the two controllers so all just brainstorms here guys all just brainstorms so i do think though if they continue to do merchandise such as candy con and private label style merchandise that's a great thing for them in the long term and what i'm looking for going into the full year 2024 report obviously we have a long time away we haven't even got q1 yet but i really want to see revenue hold up stagnant year over year uh, with them winding down some stores and potentially winding down more in the future just continuing to operate profitably make sure every single store that's open is a profitable store the online business is as strong as can be i want to see revenue hold up and be even year over year but I want to see net margins improve. So net margin for the year was 0.1%. I would like to see net margin get closer to 3% for the year. I think that would be a very nice improvement. Of course, you know, bulls will think that's great. Bears will say, oh, well, revenue's still not doing anything, right? And that's just how it goes. But as time goes on, I do want to see, you know, Q1's results, see how this impacts it in any shape or form. Although, are we technically outside of Q1? No, because... February, March, April. So we are still in Q1 right now. Crazy to think Q1 is already ending in 13 days. I mean, we won't get the report for quite a while still, but that is the current situation. And it starts with Q1, you know, in terms of them getting profitable for full year. Because if you look at Q1 last year, look, I got so many things here. Where do we have it? Where's GameStop? Oh, the ultimate canvas. So looking at margins by quarter, the net margin was negative 4.1% for Q1 2023. So I really want to see 
them profitable every quarter but every quarter at this point although i'm not 100 percent sure that'll be possible given that q1 is historically their slowest quarter but if they're able to get a net margin of even just 0.1 percent i would be very satisfied and then in q2 maybe we see another one or two percent same with q3 another one or two percent and then q4 we see the number grow to maybe six ish percent which would altogether roughly average about three percent you know Again, just completely ballparking numbers here. So that's kind of something I'm looking for. And how I see them being able to do that is more merchandise in this format. And just going about things the way they're going about it with CandyCon. And of course, you know, there's still more to be seen. And I'm just throwing all the ideas out there. Like I'm saying a million different things right now. Like I get that. But I'm just trying to, you know, get everyone thinking. You guys let me know what you think. And We'll see what happens as time goes on. That's definitely where my head's at. But I definitely do feel encouraged seeing them take another step and doing a next thing where it seems like for a long time they've been pretty stagnant and pretty quiet about what they're doing. And then all of a sudden, boom, this has been launched. Whereas if you look at the trademark, this has been in the works for a while. And then now when they launched it, it was completely ready to go. And not to say they can't expand upon it, but that's the nature of how they do things. And usually I guess a first indicator is the trademark. And one other thing I want to touch on is uh, Kevin Malone's tweet here where GameStop has, not all these are new, by the way, uh, 111 brand name products on their e-commerce site. So these are some of the miscellaneous ones. You know, it's kind of hard to see. Oh, I can't really zoom in. It's just zooming on the tweet, but you can see like they have a lot of products like under their own GameStop name, which I do want to see more of. And this is the new one right here. Uh, the wall charger that I saw someone else post. Uh, Cyber Hedge had posted it. Uh, 65 watt wall charger basically has three ports all together. One USB, uh, two USB-Cs. So again, nothing groundbreaking. I'm not saying like, oh, this is going to bring their revenue to the moon, right? Or anything like that. But it's just another step in the direction of like, private label merchandise i guess you could call it. i don't know i'm gonna try to think of a better way to put that i feel like that doesn't i guess that's what it is i don't know is that is that what you technically call it but i've said you know previously and thought about the idea of them using the gamestop brand name more to sell more of their own products in-house because those are generally higher margin items so we are starting to see that and like i said it's not these these 111 items are brand new a lot of them are pre-existing but this one is definitely brand new. And obviously CandyCon, as we see here, is all brand new. So I really do want to see them continue in this direction of creating their own merchandise and selling it exclusively at GameStop. And maybe one day even, you know, if they do have a certain product line that's successful enough, you're able to sell it elsewhere as well and then sell it to them for wholesale. So maybe that's something that's coming down the line. But I definitely like the exclusive exclusivity to GameStop right now for what they're doing with CandyCon. But for example, let's say CandyCon blows up. It's uh, growing very strong. There's interest from other retailers. Maybe Best Buy is buying them wholesale off of GameStop and it's no longer exclusive at GameStop, but they're available to be bought at Best Buy. So it's available to more people. Obviously the margin they would make on selling them wholesale to Best Buy wouldn't be as well. And I'm not saying they should do that right now, just to clarify. I'm saying if it's a product line that's really successful, going really well, and they do think doing that would be worthwhile to ultimately just bring in a lot more revenue, and it would still be net income. Like, obviously, if it's not going to bring in net income positive, then why would you even bother? So, see, still holding man, just send baby. NFL, NBA. MLB NHL collabs for team colors. Scott, I love that. That's a great idea right there. I'm going to throw that on the sheet. Let's see. Sports teams. Collaboration slash theme. Yeah, that would be super dope. That's actually a great idea. And I'm sure, you know, for the MLB, NHL, uh, NFL, whatever it is, NBA, you want... Like, they're going to want their cut. That's just how it goes. But having it named to – or not named, but those connections are really essential. And just people seeing, like, oh, yeah, like, you know, oh, there's, that's cool. Like, I'm a Yankees fan. Like, there's Yankees ones. Or, oh, I'm a 
Diamondbacks fan, like there's a theme for this, right? So that is a good idea. I do like that. I've been saying to partner with Doc for years. His opinion is well respected, not just by his fans, but by other streamers. Out would go very far to get him on our side. John, I love that. Yeah, I think Dr. Disrespect is a very unique guy. I personally really like him. Um, I don't watch all the time, and I just I like his just see his shorts. Like once in a while, I'll just find a short of his, like pop up in my feed, or I'll just look it up and I'll just watch like a bunch of the recent shorts just because he's an entertaining guy. But yeah, no, I think you're right, and that is kind of why I said the example. Like he does seem to have like relatively strong influence in the gaming community, so. That's the kind of thing you want when you're trying to create a positive brand image for GameStop. So that site's not official though, right? Ryan, thanks for being here. I believe it is because it does say powered by GameStop. And if you go like shop games, it takes you to the GameStop website or explore parts. It takes you directly to the GameStop website. So as far as I'm aware, it is. Um, I don't know officially that it is, but as far as I'm aware. And then, oh, this was the LinkedIn post I was trying to talk about before. So Alex Jones, director, private brand, and global sourcing. After eight months of behind-the-scenes work, CandyCon, our very own fully customizable controller for PC and Switch, has launched. What is special about CandyCon, I hear you ask? With CandyCon, you can customize and change the appearance of your controller with simple and easy removal of the faceplate, D-pads, and thumbsticks to create your very own unique controller anytime you like. Anyone who knows me will know that this is just is only just a start, and the plan is to build an ecosystem that brings back fans and collectors to do more than just change the color of your controller. So that right there, too, brings back fans and collectors, that collectible aspect. That's where I think you really need to make some unique designs. And it'll be available in the stores based upon this image, which I did definitely imagine to be the case. So check your local GameStop. Let me know a future stream or a video comment if you guys happen to see that. And by the way, if you don't follow me, if you could, on Twitter or X, whatever you call it these days, that would be greatly appreciated. Um, I do put out information on there about GameStop. And then also, when I'm streaming, I usually tweet out like a stream schedule for the week at the start of the week. And then also when I'm going live, see it live on YouTube now, talk CandyCon, GME, and the Bitcoin happen. So drop a follow there if you haven't already. And drop a like as well, if you don't mind. I would appreciate that. But moving on here, start your CandyCon journey now, exclusively at GameStop. Big thanks to my team, Shirley, B. Lee, Brandy, Ashlyn, for your dedication to seeing this come to life and for putting up with me as I poured over every detail to ensure we brought out the best product possible, additional individuals, for the fantastic collaboration on the branding and packaging execution was spot on. Yeah, I definitely want to touch on that quick too. I almost forgot. I really like the packaging for it. So it's over here. Okay, so yeah, it's like the little wallpaper thing, a bunch of designs. This is the packaging. I think the packaging is really nice, really nice, really neat. I like that it's mainly around the theme of the color. You know, obviously with the faceplates that have a design, you can't just do one base color. But I like that the box is just the, pretty much the color of the faceplate. I mean, obviously for just the faceplate here. And then when you see, whoa. Okay, well, this doesn't want to, but, but when you see the, like, all the boxes, right, like, you can see it, like, this is also the same kind of thing, like, it's very simple, the packaging, like, and I like that, I think that's a lot of how marketing is moving towards now, I mean, I'm speaking very, very generally, but I find the packaging appealing, like, if I saw this in a store, and I didn't know what it was, I'd say, what is CandyCon, and I'd probably pick up one of these items, because it's bright, it stands out, the packaging is simple, but attractive. That's my opinion. You could disagree. Not everyone's attractions are the same, right? But I definitely like the packaging and just format of it all together. So I would, again, you know, with the way it's structured, like I want to see them market it well, because like it pops out, you're like, oh, what is this? But it has to be easy to understand too for individuals. If they could make it work on every platform, that would be a game changer, right? I think you're absolutely right. Time will tell. Uh, even though it's slow, glad Jimmy's rolling out new hardware. Agreed, Meagle. Agree. Yeah, I definitely, like, when CandyCon came out, I was like, oh, what is this? Like, is this the next chapter? Like, how are they taking this? Like, what is this going towards? And now that we see it, I'm like, oh, okay. It's, like, basically their own in-house brand that they're adding on to be a part of what they do, which I really like. You know, originally I was thinking, like, oh, they should do more with the GameStop name. 
which, you know, they are a little bit, as I'm showing here, or I think I X'd out Kevin's tweet. But a lot of, like I said, a lot of those already pre-existed. And we do see, like, the new GameStop logo that was trademarked. So we'll see if anything comes with that. Uh, I wonder if we're going to get any merchandise uh, branded in that way or maybe rebranding some of the old merchandise uh, that they already have. But we'll see. You know, it all comes down to how it all works out. And shakes up the scene with the article here. And that's an overall summary on CandyCon. Um, stay tuned. I am going to drop a video soon. I want to go through piece by piece. I was actually thinking to clip the stream today, but it's so hard when you're first initially just going through it. I'm just talking off the dome. I'm looking at the chat. Um, having a new idea pop in my mind as I'm trying to say the previous thing. And then I'm using filler words as I'm getting to my next thought. Oh, man, streaming. What a unique thing. But, Amber, thanks for being here. Good to see you. I always love seeing everyone pop in. I really do appreciate it. Can't say that enough. But as we are, you know, going through CandyCon here, and I wonder if, you know, Freshmaker, if you're here, if this was the LinkedIn post you were talking about, it could have been it because I know I had missed a LinkedIn post previously or it was mentioned, like, towards the end of last stream. But... This was definitely, you know, informative and nice to see. And just anyone who knows me will know that this is only just a start. And the plan is to build an ecosystem that brings back fans and collectors to do more than just change the color of your controller. So we'll see what that means. Uh, time should tell as to what that statement is exactly saying or indicating towards. And then also, you know, the other little hint is in the article here. Sorry, so much to scroll here. Oh, yeah, the article that, like, decided to... Stop formatting for me. Oh my gosh. And then, yeah, the campaign. Digital and in-store with the tagline. Create, play, repeat. I definitely want to see them market this well. You know, whether it's shorts, social media posts, you have an influencer talking about it, or influencer, right? Like, that's a very general statement. But when I say influencer, I just mean somebody who games that people would listen to and go, oh well what is that i'm curious what this person has to say if they're talking about it but gamers pick up a base unit or where was it but basically it says like to start it says the groundbreaking controller will initially initially is a very key word be available for nintendo switch and pc gaming so we'll see and i think it would be very nice to see them do it with other consoles as well. And then how do they market that? That would have to be seen. So, yeah. Yo, 420 Bonk Smoke. Good to see you. Thanks for being here. You know, you're always my reminder. Like, now when I see your chats, I know, drink water. Like, I was saying on Monday, I was like, if 420 Bonk Smoke was here, he'd say, take a stop, <laughs> take a sip of water. Because you're right. Sometimes I'm just going and going and going. And, like, I just need to take a sip of water because, one, my mouth is drying up from yapping away. And, two... I need to like gather my thoughts sometimes. Okay, what am I going to say next? What am I trying to accurately portray here? But yeah, going through all that, I do now, before we wrap up here, you know, I'm trying to average each stream about an hour, hour and 10 minutes. Um, some I'll go longer, but I just want to stick to the information being as strong as possible and just being more frequent in my streams and just doing what's best for me as an individual right now. But having said all that, what I want to move into is a little bit more about the macro and just economics and why I believe in Bitcoin. And I think the Bitcoin having coming up is, you know, a good time to talk about. It. And a lot of people are talking about it right now, obviously, considering it's an event that takes place about every four years. But seeing that the dollar is just increasing in supply consistently, the deficit is not going away. I just see it as a alternative asset to hold and it's an alternative asset that's just becoming widely accepted. And as it becomes more accepted and more known, I think that will raise the value. And on top of it, as I mentioned towards the start of the stream, Bitcoin supply is not deflationary, but it's disinflationary. And this article actually does a really good job of saying that. Um, so I was reading it today. Dis, sorry, disinflationary. That is the official word. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Cookies, cookies, cookies. Okay. So what is a deflationary supply? 
The term deflationary supply started being used more in combination with Ethereum and the other burn was introduced, but what does that mean? At the highest level, a deflationary supply is when a token supply decreases over time, which may lead to its value increasing in demand if Bitcoin supply remains the same or increases. With Bitcoin, or I'm sorry, that's deflationary, right? Don't get confused here. So that's deflationary. It's applying Ethereum. With Bitcoin, it's 20 million supply cap means that for the network's economic value to shrink or expand, the asset price is the only metric that can adjust. The term disinflationary better fits Bitcoin's monetary policy because its inflation rate falls each halving cycle. That's the key part right there. Inflation rate falls each halving cycle. Half as many blocks are mined. Half as many Bitcoins are mined per day. Bitcoin's monetary policy does not currently include a deflationary mechanism. So while it's not deflationary, it's disinflationary. So as the dollar is becoming increasingly inflationary, the inflation rate of Bitcoin is slowing. And when I say inflation, that's the amount of Bitcoin being mined each day, because each time a new Bitcoin's mined, it's being added to the supply. But as of right now, there's about, there's, the cap is 21 million, but already about 19 point something million Bitcoin has already been mined. And each time it halves, it's being mined even slower. And each time it's halved, like more and more people are familiar with it. And there seems to be more and more demand for it. So the amount of supply increasing is slowing. Like the amount that the supply is increasing is slowing down. And on top of it, it seems like demand is just consistently picking up. And especially now with the Bitcoin ETFs and large institutions getting involved, I just see it as a lot of de demand versus a dwindling supply. And that doesn't even account for the fact that there are a lot of wallets in the beginning that people maybe had some Bitcoin that completely lost. Like there's that one that there's a couple we always see pop up every once in a while, right? A couple stories like one is always, oh, that guy that bought uh, Bi Bitcoin, it bought pizza with his Bitcoin and he regrets it forever, right? That's like the popular one. The other popular one that I see pop up every once in a while, there's this guy who threw out a hard drive or a computer that had a ton of Bitcoin on it. And he keeps trying to get permission from the t from his town or the town he used to live in, whatever the case, to go to the landfill and try and locate it. I don't know how the heck he would do that, but the town keeps denying him because it's like a safety hazard, something of that nature. But those are all Bitcoins that have disappeared. If that guy can never get them back, it's in a lost wallet, essentially. Nobody can ever... Put those back into circulation. Oh, okay, someone buy those up. Somebody mine those. Like, that's just not how it works. So it's very unique in that sense, too. But I really do believe in Bitcoin as long as the dollar is inflating. We continue to turn the deficit. Uh, the dollar is losing purchasing power. Currencies around the world are losing purchasing power just consistently. So I think Bitcoin is going to be a big part of the future and a very unique up and coming uh, alternative asset class and i'm not saying you should buy bitcoin it's not for everyone um, i simply look at it as risk versus reward if it somehow it doesn't work out somehow it goes to zero which i highly highly doubt so be it whatever i put in that's the most i can lose if it works out and it does increase in value dramatically it's really just risk versus reward for me and i'm long term you guys know how i roll uh, especially with Bitcoin, I'm definitely of the opinion to buy and hodl, but I will say I am buying or I bought, was buying some and I'm still buying a little bit now with the intention of selling a little bit in about a year from now, maybe a little bit less on the having price cycle. Because historically speaking, anytime the Bitcoin having has taken place, that's the most bullish indicator for Bitcoin in the short term upcoming. But let me clarify, if this time is different, Bitcoin falls in value, it stays stagnant for the next two years, doesn't really do anything, I'm not going to sell what I accumulated. I'm going to hold for the long term because I still believe in it and I'm still not buying more than I can afford to lose or anything like that. Like I'm managing what's best for me and that's my game plan going in where I'm willing to sell some upon the upward cycle, but there is a cold wallet I have where I'm just hodling no matter what for the long term. But at the same time, if that short-term position doesn't work out, it can turn into a long-term long position, and I have no problem with that at all. And that's just where I stand. Again, doesn't mean that's where you have to think, what you have to think, where you have to stand, or anything like that. But that's where my head's at with Bitcoin. And 
to go over here, you know, we just taken out the Great Depression. I love the first comment. Shout out White Rabbit 741 You guys should follow him on X slash Twitter if you haven't already. But everything is fine. Four rate cuts this year. 2% inflation and forget GameStop. Got to always forget GameStop, right? But, and this is one of the accounts that's always like, oh, GameStop, blah, 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 blah. Whenever anything happens with it, they just tweet in all caps and nonsense. But this is a crazy chart, like, when you look at it. The market cap of the largest stock relative to the 75th percentile stock. So it shows how top heavy the market is. And historically, when that's happened, it's led to disaster, right? And I'm not saying that's guaranteed or anything like that, but it's just an interesting chart to look at. I thought I'd share. And then uh, 741 Trey also puts out some good information, just miscellaneous. But in 2023, the DTC processed three quadrillion in securities, a year over year increase of 450 trillion. Just absurd numbers, absurd, absurd numbers to look at and just say. And then here, found this gem in the DTC 2023 annual financial statement. As of next reporting period, Q1 slash May release, the DTCC is to start reporting crypto. So I found that interesting. Accounting for and disclosure of crypto assets, effective January 1st, 2024. And honestly, that is where I see a red flag with crypto, where it's like, these institutions are going to have a large amount of Bitcoin through the Bitcoin ETFs under their management, and then they have a lot of influence. And then that's where I start to get a little bit nervous, or I see, how do I put this? Like a black swan event could occur through that in some shape or form. Like I couldn't identify exactly. I guess the easiest would be they all just dump it at the exact same time. Oh, Bitcoin's actually terrible, but why would they set up all these ETFs and do different things that have taken place? But maybe there's going to be, because you know how the DTC works, right? I mean, I'll let you have your own opinion, right? But a lot of suspicious things happen within the DTC, in my personal opinion. And it is like actually concerning, considering the things that go on with the stock market through the functionality of the DTC. Now they're going to start reporting crypto too. Why are they accounting and reporting for crypto? What does that mean? Is it being accurately done? You know, more and more questions then come. So, yeah, I think I'll pretty much leave it there for today. That's where my head's at with the Bitcoin having and just GameStop as a whole and markets as a whole. You know, I think tread lightly because the S&P 500 has just been roaring higher for too long now. And a wise quote my grandpa told me when I first started getting involved in stocks, like he worked on Wall Street like way back, um, like on the trading floor when there used to be a million people working on Wall Street. But he said, you know, anything that can go up super quick, it can come down just as fast. So something goes up 100%, or I guess obviously it wouldn't necessarily go down 100% just as fast. But the point is, S&P goes up 100 really fast, it can go down 100 really fast, right? And we've seen the exception to this last couple of weeks here. It's just been like straight up from the bottom in November, like the start of November, it went from pretty much like 410 all the way up to 510. So nearly 20% in six months for the S&P. So I would say it's very possible in a one year period, we see the S&P go down 20%. And again, I'm not saying that's going to happen. That's not like any prediction I'm making based on some specific evidence. I'm just saying Generally speaking, if the market can go up that fast, it can go down that fast as well. And I think it's the same with GameStop because you look at how dramatic the stock moves. I think when it does start to go up, as I personally believe it absolutely will in the long term, it will make a dramatic staircase upward to this effect just the same way it went down, right? It went from high 20s down to nearly $10 right here in this short period of time. A relatively short on a long-term basis going from June to December. And then even here, you know, we've seen it make a pretty quick move down. So just as fast as it went down to 10 from 13, it could go back from 10 to 13. And just the same as here, where it went from like 26, 27 down to 10. It could go from 10 to 26, 27 in the next six months. And I'm not saying it definitely will. And given the nature of the company and some of the interesting things that go around the stock price it's hard. i don't think we'll necessarily see that in the six months unless you know they start turning a profit things start to look better maybe we get some other kind of news you know throwing all the ideas out there but yeah i think i'll leave it there for today um, i hope this helped inform you guys give you some perspective on bitcoin at the end there and definitely you know with candy con 
going through it. I do apologize if I was tripping on my words in any way. Sometimes I come in and I have this like whole plan in my head and then I start talking and it's like it all just disappears. It's actually crazy. But that's just the way it goes sometimes and I'm just keep working to be better. And, you know, something I've been trying to do, which is difficult. And when I listen to this back, I'll hear myself say this, which will be funny. I've been trying to listen to every stream back. Like I just play it on 1.5x speed. Think like, okay, what am I doing wrong? How can I improve upon that? Where did I mess up? What can I do better? So just keep trying to better myself. And I think every individual has to do that out there. You know, obviously not all of you are necessarily streaming. Maybe some of you are doing that or videos or whatever your thing is. Like you got to just keep getting better at it. Like it takes time and execution is not easy. But if you show up every day and you keep doing it, that's like the hardest part. And I'm coming to realize that the older I get, like just showing up and starting, whether it's work, Tetron, anything I'm doing in my life, just starting is like always the hardest part because you have it all in your head like oh this and then I'm gonna have to deal with that and then this and then ah oh, this person or that thing or ah oh, what if this what if that you start going through all that and just so much thinking and thinking but if you start doing it the obstacle comes up and you're like okay or this is how I think at least I'm like okay how do I get around this obstacle um how do I solve this oh okay well I'm not that familiar with the cash flow statement what can I do to become more familiar how can I break it down for myself where I can better explain during my live streams how the cash flow statement works and that's something I've been working on here I'm still building upon this so I broke down like Q4 the actual numbers for the cash flow statement in a little bit of a neater format and then the explanation next to it I've still build upon it and just this alone has helped me explain the cash flow statement better and it's just one random example but now I'm getting ranty and all motivational speaky, speaky, but yeah, no, I really do appreciate you guys uh, tuning in. I'm going to keep doing at least two live streams a week. I'm going to try and get one or two videos out a week. Stay tuned for the CandyCon video. That's just going to be a short and sweet video where I'm pretty much going to go through this slideshow here and just kind of say the same things. Not exactly the same things I said here, but just really summarize it and get to the point and just... For anyone wonder where CandyCon is, I hope when you look up what is CandyCon, you'll see Tetron. What is CandyCon? So, thanks again for watching. I hope everyone has a good night.